What's up, guys, and welcome back to EBFG TV. We are here for another match review. The Seattle Sounders go down to Toronto FC 1-0 at home on a Josie Outdoor PK. Brian, it was rough. What do you think? Yeah, that's exactly what I think. It was, it was rough. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's hard to say that they really deserved to win, mm -hmm. but I can certainly say that we didn't deserve to win. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, a draw may have been more fair. Um, I didn't actually, I didn't rewatch the penalty call, but it looked in real time in the stadium like it was a good call. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Josie's usually pretty clinical on PKs, so I, that was pretty much a given for them. Um, and we, going forward, we just, we lacked creativity again. Uh, and I was hoping, you know, as the game progressed on, maybe we were going to do another one of those, like, start playing for the last 15 minutes things, and it just never happened, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, it just never came. Um, I, I, I feel like we're, we're trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results and uh, not getting it. Um, yeah. I, I feel like we keep, we keep giving the ball to Joven out wide, expecting him to put in this great cross, and it's just over and over and over and over again. And uh, we did have like 10 or 11 corners, which were great, but when those corners aren't um, all, that, all that productive, it's not great to have 10 or 11 corners. Um, yeah, but it was rough. I, I don't, I don't think we deserve to win. We just, we just don't have that, that killer instinct, I guess, uh, in the final third. We look really good leading up to that. Um, and then it just, it just goes out. It dies out. Um, we, yeah, that's, that's about it really. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm with you. It's frustrating. And the, the corners, I think me and you have talked about this privately several times mm -hmm. is one, one of the biggest things that frustrates me. And I know we're paying Nico a lot of money and I know he's a very mm -hmm. good player Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a very creative player and usually a very good passer. Mm -hmm. uh, his corners have been poor, to put it mm -hmm. nicely, um, as have many of his, you know, dead ball free kicks. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see, obviously, in the on corners, you want Dempsey in the box, so I don't want him taking yeah. those. Yeah. Uh, but, like, when a guy like Ship comes on the field, you know, another smaller kind of creative passing player, let him take the corners uh, or let, you know, Wingo or whoever else take them because uh, something's just not working there. And I'd like to see Dempsey take more of the, the free kicks in the attacking third as well. But that's up to yeah. the players, I guess. You know, it's out of our control. But it's it's yeah, it was a little frustrating. Yeah, our set pieces have been have been bad all season, in my opinion. Uh, corners and free kicks. Um, we just don't look that dangerous. Um, we're not putting in super dangerous balls. Um, yeah, we just don't we we just don't have it right now. I don't know what needs to click. I don't know what needs to what needs to turn over for the team to start scoring again. Um, but yeah, we, we just we just don't have that. As I said earlier, we don't have that that final bite, that final uh, that killer instinct uh, in the final third. And um, there was there was obviously the the, the big um, debate between whether whether or not the Sounders deserved a penalty a couple times. Um, what do you think about those two um, possibly missed handballs? Uh, the I only saw one of them to be honest, uh, and I don't. I think it would have been a very harsh penalty. Mm -hmm. um, again, I didn't didn't rewatch the game because I was pretty. Mm -hmm pissed off and very sick uh, at that yeah. point yeah uh, which is why we're recording now instead of doing yeah. our normal thing after uh at uh, temple billiards um but yeah at the time it looked like one of those things where it just bounced up and hit him in the hand which like yeah but you know again if if that was our team and we got called a handball for that our fans would be furious yeah so i i feel like it's not a bad non-call but it was such a strange game, like from the refereeing aspect and the crowd aspect, and it was the early kickoff and it was a rematch, and yeah, it was just a weird game. Um, I feel the same way. I think if that PK goes against the Sounders, we'd be uh, tweeting mer uh, mercilessly about it, um, you yeah. know, saying the ref should like get his license revoked or something. Exactly. Uh, and and now that now that it wasn't called, we're we're pretty much doing the same thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those calls where uh, you know he saw it from whatever angle he was at, and he didn't think it was a PK, and then. We have, you know, 12 different broadcast angles that might make it look like a PK that he doesn't have. So um, right. it's just it's just one of those things. And those are going to go against you. We just as uh, Brian Schmetzer said in his post match press post match press conference, um, we just need a little bit more killer and strength and a little bit more luck um, on, on different things like that. Yeah, which I would prefer the, the killer instinct part. I think. Yeah, that was uh, something we heard a lot last season was oh, we just need the bounces to go our way. If you're relying yeah. on the bounces to go your way to win games, you're not doing good enough. Uh, yeah, the killer instinct is something that can that can be changed. Um, yeah. The luck is something that, that just happens. Exactly. <laughs> um, 
you know, it's like the the saying in UFC, never let it go to the hands of the judges. Never let it go to the hands of just random bounces and fate in soccer. So And the referees. Or the referees, yeah. Yeah. Um, but here we are. We now sit below Minnesota United in the Western Conference table. What do you think needs to change as we go to Chicago next week uh, and then Salt Lake at home in a couple weeks' time? I mean, traditionally, we've been very good against Chicago. Um, they're looking, you know, rather revitalized this year, though, so that'll be maybe a tougher game than than it used to be. We used to be just go there and, and smash them, but mm-hmm. uh, they got your boy Basti there now, and I won't go too much into that for fear of <laughs> triggering you, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's hard to say. You know, you don't want to, like, take out all of the star players or anything, but it's just mm-hmm. maybe it's a formation thing or maybe it's a – just look at what we're doing in L.A. I mean, it works when those guys are clicking. Uh, mm-hmm. They're deadly. Granted, L.A.'s defense was absolutely terrible, so maybe not yeah. the best example. <laughs> um, but, like, you can see in the, the buildup of those plays, they're doing these little one-two passes and going around guys and backheel flicks, and they're seeing each other and making runs. Um, this last game against Toronto, I saw Jordan Morris make at least seven or eight runs. Just a beautiful diagonal run, cuts in behind the yeah. defense, would have beat the back line, and the, the midfielder just looked at him like, well, no, and then passes yeah. it short. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if it's a, a confidence thing with the team or just a, a vision thing or just maybe the guys aren't quite all used to playing together yet. You know, there's a lot of new faces in there. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see what Schmetz comes out with on Saturday. I, I definitely don't think it's it's time to blow it up. It's still pretty early in the season. Yeah. Uh, there's still plenty of time. I mean, I, I, I hate to keep saying this, and I, I, I even hate that other people have said it, but last year we were bad until the end of July, and look what happened. Um, I don't want to rely on those runs every year, but... No, you, know, you can't. I mean, it's... No, you can't, but, I mean, I'm not going to panic in May. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Um, right. But I, 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 personally, I really need to see more out of Will Bruin. I didn't. I literally did not notice he was on the field the first half uh, against um, Toronto. Um, I, I, I came back to my seat at halftime and I asked who came off for him. I, I literally didn't even re- realize that he started. Um, and that's me being a little oblivious. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd love to see more out of Will Bruin uh, in Chicago. Maybe get a, a, a goal under his belt in open play to, to kind of boost his confidence and boost the whole team's confidence in him, really. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. He's he's one of those guys, He's if you put the ball at his feet inside the 18, he's mm-hmm. a brilliant finisher. Mm-hmm. Um, but on a team that, that really thrives on that build-up play and the, the sh- short, sharp passes and mm-hmm. uh, one-twos and stuff like that, it's not really his forte. Yeah, and It's something he's definitely going to have to work on uh, as the season progresses. But yeah, you know, as you're saying, it's, it's May, it's not time to panic. But... Last year, and I know our fans probably hate this word, uh, last year was a fluke. It's never happened in MLS before. It's probably never going to happen again. You, you just can't rely on that. I don't want to be going into August and September fighting for a playoff spot. I want to be fighting for that support shield. Yeah, or even just fighting for a higher seat. Um, because, yeah. I mean, you know, last year, even going into the final day of the season, we weren't sure if we were going to be in the playoffs or we also, like, had the chance to host a playoff, like, the first round, which we did. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you, you don't want to be fighting for that stuff late in the season, especially, I mean, you know, we're obviously very biased, but a club of this size um, and, a, and a club with this kind of history. Exactly. You don't, want to, you don't want to be constantly trying just to make it right over the red line. You want to be high and above it every year, competing for, for more and more silverware. Um, yeah, US, speaking of silverware, U.S. Open Cup starts pretty soon, so that'll be pretty yeah. fun. That's uh, always exciting. Yeah, that's always exciting. Hopefully we get to actually host a home match this year. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's not time to panic. It's not time to blow it all up. But I will say that I am a bit concerned. I'm, yeah, I'm starting to get a little concerned as well. It's, uh, you know, once or twice you're like, oh, you know, bad game, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is, you know, we saw it in Houston. We saw it in Montreal. We saw it in Vancouver. We saw it mm-hmm. for almost all of that game against New England. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw it against Toronto again. And at the end of the game against San Jose there, um, it's, yeah, it's definitely starting to become a little bit worrying of a trend where they, they just kind of go to sleep for large portions of the game and then expect that a few minutes of brilliance is going to fix everything. Yeah. Uh, tell us what you guys think. Comment down below. Tell us if you're concerned or not. Tell us if it's time to panic or not. Or you can tell us at, on Twitter, at EBFGTV. Uh, thanks, as always, for watching. Like, comment, subscribe down below. All that fun stuff. Follow us on Twitter, at EBFGTV. We'll be back later this week for a match preview for the match in Chicago, which Brian will be at. So, yeah, we'll see you guys later.